Hi, uh, my name is Stephen Mating. I have recently begun contributing some code to the Kerbal Operating System project for Kerbal Space Program. And I wanted to make a little demonstration of the newest feature that should be coming up in the next version called VecDraw or VectorDraw. As you can see in the little terminal window here, what I'm doing is I'm making a variable called VD and I'm setting it to the VecDraw constructor. And I set its suffix called Vec to a particular vector. In this case, I'm just making one up. Now, what this mod is going to do is it gives you the ability to, whoops, little typo there, it gives you the ability to help debug to sh see what the actual XYZ system looks like in Kerbal Space Program, which is kind of hard to visualize usually. So in this case, I've created a vector and told it to show itself, and there you have it. That's the basics of what this thing does. Now, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's, that's the minimum you need to know to get anything to happen. Now, in this particular case, my, my vector just kind of sticks off into space, but I can change things about it. For example, I can give it a different color. And I have some named colors, um, red, blue, green, yellow, and so on. But also you can give it an RGB tuple to pick the red, green, blue colors that you feel like on your own. And uh, here I made a little error there because I picked a color that was so close to green you didn't notice it changing anything. But if I pick a color that's significantly different from the one I started from, you'll see that it takes effect immediately on screen. If I can just type it correctly, it takes effect immediately on screen. There. So now I've turned it an orangey color. You can also uh, use an RGBA, A for alpha, to give your vector a bit of transparency. So here I'm making the orange vector quite a bit more transparent, although that in this particular example was not what I want to do, so let's put that back. Okay, so uh, the way this works is you can just keep adding these all you want, change them around, fiddle with them. Another suffix they have is label, which you can just put any string you feel like, and the game will show that string now in the middle of the vector so you can help figure out what's what. And again, this is mostly a debugging tool, although you could use it if you want to make your scripts show visually interesting things to the user. And uh, you can also change the scale of it to make it larger and smaller, uh, the, changing the length, and it'll just basically multiply this as a scalar times the vector. So in this case, I'm making it really big, and you'll notice that it just goes off into the distance and you can't even see the other end of the arrow. But if you flip out to the map view and zoom way out, you can see, yep, there it is, there's the vector. And they will show up in map view correctly and scale as you adjust. So this, is, this could be used to show you things uh, on the large transfer orbits or something small scale close up. It's really up to you what scale you want to, to do, use this feature to see things. So I set that back to a more normal one-for-one one scale. Incidentally, the one-for-one one scale means that one unit of math equals one uh, meter in the space. So now I'm making the vector point at the moon. I set its position to moon position relative to my craft, and there you go. Now, one thing you can do with these is you can change the origin point of where the vector is drawn from. It defaults to drawing it from wherever your ship is. But I could set the start to any particular position I feel like. Here I'm just going to type in some big vector to give it a new position. And that will set the tail of the vector to be there when it draws it. Of course, I have to remember to actually type the word to, which I keep forgetting to do. There we go, and you see that it moved the base of the vector over a bit. It now is starting in a different location. That's not particularly useful here, but what it's useful to do is if you want to show vector tip to tail addition, you can put one vector's origin point at the tip of a different vector to visually show that happening on the screen. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to demonstrate here is going to be a little bit more complicated. I'm going to clear off the screen here so you can see what I'm going to do next. Now I'm going to 
use a new command called vecdrawargs. You pass it in to make the, the three axes, and it'll show them on the screen for you visually. And you can see that each one is setting v one colon one comma zero zero or zero comma one comma zero or zero comma zero comma one to get the three axes out. And if you just run that here and give it an origin point to draw them from, I'll draw them a little bit offset from the craft rather than right on it. It has drawn them, although you can't see them from the map view. You're going to have to go in because they're too small to see from here. But there we go, back into flight view, and you can see them now. And that is also a handy thing to help you see what the actual coordinate system looks like. Incidentally, it is a left-handed coordinate system, which I didn't even realize myself until I wrote this program. Um, and then saw, oh, look, it's left-handed, which I didn't know. But anyway... Um, so now I'm going to make one final, more complex example. I have a, another vessel that's nearby up there, you can see, called a sender2. So I'm going to set a variable equal to that other vessel. And then I'm going to lock a, another vector, which I'll call rvel, to be the difference between my velocity and the other vessel's velocity. So it'll be the relative velocity between our two vessels. So the ship velocity orbit minus the other vessel's velocity orbit. And from now on, if I ever look at RVEL, RVEL will be the relative velocity difference between our two vessels. Now, if I was to take that RVEL and graph that on the screen with a vector, which I'm about to do here, then you will be able to see our relative velocity between me and that other target on screen. Now, I skipped through a bit of stuff there because I had a lot of typos and didn't want to bother keeping that in the video because that was boring. But as you can see, that yellow vector there is now the relative velocity between me and the target, greatly exaggerated because the scale is at 10. And I'm going to give it a text label here so you can see. There it is. That's the relative velocity. Now, normally, watch here, I will thrust a bit. And you can tell that normally, um, when I change my relative velocity to the target, you'll notice that vector isn't moving. And that's because what this system does is it only sets things, it doesn't lock them, because it's actually very difficult to lock something to a suffix in the way KOS works. You can't quite do that. So what you could do, though, is make an until loop. Here I'm going to make an until loop that'll keep going until I hit action group not, uh, 8. That will continually update the vector of the R draw object I just made. So now we'll continue up, continually update the vector to point at whatever RVEL is, which you saw earlier has already been locked. And now that yellow vector called relative will on the fly keep updating itself as long as that until loop runs. So now if I rotate to the target and kill my velocity, you'll see relative velocity between me and my target is dynamically changing. The little arrow is moving about as I go. So I'm thinking that for the sake of debugging, things like this will be quite useful because you can actually see what's going on. And you could also perhaps use it to make a bit of a GUI system where you actually show the user what's happening while the autopilot's doing its work. As you can see here, I've thrusted toward the target quite a bit and you can see the arrow pointing toward it. And as orbital mechanics curve me around, it's aiming more and more away from it. So I will kill that velocity here, rotating around, thrusting a bit. And you can see the yellow arrow reducing in magnitude as I do so. So I think this particular mod could be very handy for not only debugging and helping you see what's going on, but you could also perhaps use it to show some interesting stuff on the screen to the user as you go. So there you have it. That's my little demonstration of the new vector off facility and how it works. And as you can see here, I'm going to end the video with me approaching this craft rather quickly. And uh, then killing all my rotation as I get close to it. Now you can imagine that if I had some kind of a docking script going on that you might actually visually see a thing like that on the screen as I, as I do the work. So I hope you find this useful. Um, let me know on the forums if you find anything cool you'd like to do with this or any interesting features that you think it would be handy for. Or if you'd like more features like this added. Um, the ability to draw graphic primitives on the screen could be expanded to do more than just vectors. Um, anything you think might be handy, we can add it to the script. 
So there you go.